What is up, Thrill Seekers? So today, I am going to be doing my analysis video on Candymonium, which is a new roller coaster going to Hershey Park. It is going to be their 15th coaster, and it's going to be located in Chocolate Town, which is a new $150 million expansion that is opening in 2020. Of course, this is a B&M Hyper roller coaster, um, which means it is going to be um, in the 200-foot range, uh, which, of course, they already have Sky Rush, but I will be getting into why I think it's still a good addition um, later in the video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the stats of it, the layouts, um, of course, if I think it's a good addition to the park, and where it will most likely rank in the park, um, at least from my standpoint. So, first off, with these stats, it is going to be the tallest roller coaster in the park, standing at 210 feet tall. Um, it is also going to be the fastest roller coaster in the park. It's breaking three park records. Um, second is the fastest at 76 miles an hour. And finally, it is going to be the longest roller coaster in the park. It is going to be 4,636 feet long. Um, that is 4,636 feet of track. Um, and of course, the sweetest um, it is going to have a chocolate colored track, um, so kind of a darker brown color, as well as some themed trains. There's going to be a Hershey's themed train, a Reese's themed train, and I think a Twizzlers themed train. Um, correct me down below if that's wrong, but um, from my understanding, those are going to be the three trains that are going to be on this roller coaster. Um, anyways, getting into the layout. So, of course, you climb uh, 210 feet into the air and have your first drop. So, talking about this drop and also about the trains, um, this drop seems to be super awesome. Really just a basic B&M Hyper drop. Not anything too, too steep, but will definitely give some nice floater airtime, really no matter where you sit in the train, but especially in the back row. Um, speaking of the rows, so the cars, at least from this rendering, seem to only have six rows instead of um, seven that you see on Mako, eight that you see on other B&M Hypers, and I think some uh, B&M Hypers have even longer trains than that. So it seems like B&M is starting to kind of go with shorter trains, at least on their B&M Hypers. Um, of course, like I said, Mako um, only has a seven-row train, um, versus Apollo's Chariot, which I think has eight or nine rows and even maybe more. I'm honestly not sure. Um, but, um, I'm not sure how to react to this. Of course, it might be a downside because it might mean that, um, the back row won't really get whipped over the hills like um, the back row does on other B&M Hypers and really other, any coaster in general, um, usually the back row has the most pop in terms of airtime. Um, but it also might mean that there's less friction and less drag on the train. So it also might mean that it traverse, traverses the course at a faster speed which means that it would have strong airtime either way, no matter where you're sitting. So really, I have no idea how to react to the shorter train. It might be a good thing. Most likely it's a bad thing, again, just with the, I guess, pull of the back row um, over the hills. 
But of course, we will be able to know once people actually get on this thing. Um, and I'm excited for people to get on it so that I can hear what people think of it and if it's a good coaster, bad coaster, all of that sort of stuff. Um, anyways, going on with the layout after it levels out at the bottom where it will reach its max speed of 76 miles an hour. It is going to go up into a nice floater hill, um, which these B&M Hypers are really known for. Um, it is then going to go into a Mako-like turnaround. I think it's called a hammerhead turn, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, yeah, it just seems like a classic turnaround. Of course, you see it on Mako, like I mentioned, and it doesn't seem to be anything crazy or anything along those lines. Um, from there, it goes into another floater hill, and you just see a little glimpse of it here in this rendering, but it goes through a speed hill. Um, really, this whole coaster definitely reminds me of Mako at SeaWorld Orlando, especially the turnaround, the height, um, just being... Uh, Mako is 200 feet, and this will be 210 feet, so, you know, they're on the shorter side of B&M Hypers. I think most B&M Hypers are somewhere around 220, um, but again, correct me down below if I'm wrong. Anyways, um, so it will be going up into this speed hill, which should give some nice ejector or at least flow ejector airtime which is super, super awesome. And then it will go into this interesting turnaround. This definitely reminds me of the treble clef on Fury 325, just in that um, it kind of has the same banked turn um, then to going down, um, except this turn is actually banked outwards, so it actually switches directions before it goes into the banked, uh, like overbanked turn. Um, I think it'll be super fun. I guess we'll see what people think of it, but it looks pretty, pretty awesome. Um, definitely unique, um, to any B&M Hyper for sure. And really any coaster in general. Um, I don't really see many that have something like this. So it will be interesting once people get on it. Of course, there's another airtime hill, and then it goes around the Kisses Fountain, which should be pretty awesome, especially because you can really see the coaster whizzing by you when you're sitting and enjoying the fountain. I think that will be a very cool aspect to the coaster. It will also give people a good opportunity to take cool pictures and cool video of the coaster whizzing by them think that'll be a very good touch. And um, really from there, it just does a little airtime hill and goes into the brake run. Anyways, enough about the layout of this coaster. Um, I will be talking about if it is a good fit for the park and where it really ranks in the park lineup, at least in my opinion. So I do take sides with Taylor from Coaster Studios. He did an analysis for this video, and um, I do definitely take his stance on it. I do think that is a that it is a good fit for the park. Of course, they do have a hyper coaster already, which is why lots of people are saying, oh, it was a totally useless addition, you know, all of that kind of stuff. I disagree um, because it is definitely very different than Sky Rush. Sky Rush is very is in a compact space, so it does really a lot of tight turns, a lot of ejector airtime hills, and is overall a very intense coaster um, versus this, um, which is going to be very spread out. It's going to be a little bit more on the graceful side, and it is going to 
have a lot of um, floater airtime, which should be super fun, especially for the general public. Of course, lots of people don't love Sky Rush because of the intensity and, of course, the lap bars, but in terms of the general public, the intensity isn't something that they love, um, which is differing, of course, from most coaster enthusiasts. Um, but this will definitely offer more of a graceful, gentle ride, which I think the general public will definitely love. And, of course, in the end of the day, their opinion is the main thing that matters. Um, you know, they definitely make up most of the park's attendance, and they are the people who make most of the park's money, um, at least, like, spend money at the parks um, so that the parks can build coasters like this. Um, so... Yeah, it's definitely a GP pleaser, as lots of people are calling it. But it is definitely going to, um, definitely going to please uh, coaster enthusiasts too. Coaster enthusiasts like myself, who actually prefer floater airtime over ejector airtime. Of course, other coaster enthusiasts will love this coaster as well. I'm not saying that. Um, other people will hate it or anything like that. It's definitely going to be a fun coaster for everyone, but some people, like myself, would most likely um, put it over Sky Rush just because of the more graceful and floater ejector, or sorry, floater airtime um, preference. I like floater airtime more, and I like gracefulness more than intensity. That is why I-305 is not in my top 15, but a coaster like um, Apollo's Chariot is, or American Thunder is. Um, so, yeah, um, I know that I'm going to get bashed for that, but I think that it will definitely rank number one at the park when I go. Of course, I might be surprised by Sky Rush, but I'm honestly not 100% sure. I feel like this looks better in my opinion, but we'll have to wait and see. So that is my analysis of Candymonium, which is going to Hershey Park in 2020. Definitely go check out my reviews um, and analysis is the my coaster reviews playlist because I do have some analyses in there. Um, I do I do have an analysis of Chocolate Town, which is the area of the park that is going um, that this coaster is going into. So definitely go check that out. I will leave that playlist as well as that specific video up in the right hand corner of your screen so definitely go click that but anyways that's really going to be it for my analysis of candymonium of course put in the comments below what you think of this coaster do you think it's a good addition bad addition do you think you'll love it think it's okay or do you think you'll hate it definitely put those in the comments below and anyways, that is going to be it. So I will see you all next time. Peace out.